Is it still spinning? Oh, there we go. I hear it. I heard it ding. Uh, all right, here we go. So this is the presentation. Oh my gosh, I wish everyone knew about this. The virtual share -thon. It's actually the third time we're doing it today. So you're our third group. We've, uh, we've learned some stuff along the way. Uh, your facilitators today are me. I am Chris Bouguet, and I'm the Assistive Technology Specialist. But I like to, that's my job title, but I like to think of myself as an inclusive design facilitator. And what that means is that for many years working in assistive technology, uh, you know, technology is used to help solve problems. So if there was some sort of problem, we would put technology in place to stop that or, or prevent that problem from happening. And that's that's exactly what I, I feel like an inclusive design facilitator does, is now instead of fixing a problem after it starts, it's using technology to prevent a problem from it, from it ever happening. Um, and it's helping teachers, general ed teachers, special ed teachers, educators, design inclusively how to use this technology to design educational experiences for all learners. Joyce Sharp is a specialized instructional facilitator for assistive technology. She's actually not going to be joining us today for this session. She's off helping someone else in another session today. And then we've got... Hi, I'm Tucker. And um, if any of you haven't figured it out, I am Chris Bouguet's son. Uh, I'm a sophomore at Valley. And um, I'm excited to be here with you guys. Go Vikes! I got my Viking hat on. Here we Hi. go. And real quick, just in case the rest of this, if you, we wanted to show you that uh, there is um, a quick little strategy, a little a tool to use are these alternatives to Bitmojis. Bitmojis are great. I'm sure you know they're all the rage right now um, with uh, Bitmoji classrooms. Maybe some of you have even made a Bitmoji classroom, which is great. Go, go for it. But some students might want to make a Bitmoji, and it's not really not meant for students that are ages 13 and under. They, uh, But they might want to create an avatar just like um just like you did and and maybe use these avatars uh for their google accounts or whatever so peanuts the peanutizeme.com is a way where you can create little versions uh, students can make a version of themselves and there's no sign in required you just go to the website you create your character take a screenshot and you're done so quick little tool there i think that might be useful for you all right what is today all about well today is about you you are going to be sharing uh, tips, strategies, tricks, hacks, or anything else in your experience that you found useful, uh, whether it's with distance learning or beyond, stuff that you will that that will be really useful to, that you found really useful, your learners have found useful, and that uh, you'd like to share out with everybody. You will be the presenter. So the way this is going to work is that Tucker, being the facilitator, is going to see your name posted in a chat. You're going to create a queue in the chat. Um, and you're going to post your name, and then he's going to copy your name and keep it over in a Google Doc, and he's going to cross those names off as you present. So when Tucker calls your name, you come on, you present for your, your time, and then the next, then he'll, Tucker will call the next name and the next name, and we'll, one by one, we'll, we'll, we'll go through. So everyone makes sense. You put your name in the chat, and you get put in, put in the queue. When you are sharing... Um, try and keep it relatively short. Uh, three minutes or less is, is really a, a good barometer for how much time you want to spend on your strategy. So, you know, share. We're not going to be ogres about it. If it's like four minutes, we're not going to be a good all huffy about it. Um, but, you know, try and keep it short so the next person can come. Right? All right. Uh, now, how are we organizing all of this? Well, we created something called the Super Mega Awesome share Google Sheet. And if you were to click on that link right now, it would take you over to a Google Sheet that uh, houses all of the information. So what we're going to put there, uh, and in fact, if you're there now, you'll see that that sheet has columns. So there's name of presenter. So it's all the people that have presented, the strategy and tool that they presented, the platform that it's on. So like if it was uh, uh, Google or if it's um like a Google extension, or if it's a website, or if it's a Office 365 thing. And then there'll be a link, maybe to a tutorial, to a video as well, uh, a brief description, and then implementation ideas, how you think you could use this. Uh, and the last column over is other ideas. So let's say someone's presenting something and you're like, oh my goodness, I use something very similar, but in a different way. You can go over to the uh, to the spreadsheet and go ahead and add that to the last column because this complete spreadsheet 
is wide open. You should all have editing rights to this spreadsheet. Um, so if I spell something wrong or if the URL is not working and you can fix it, you can go ahead and go ahead and do that. Um, even if you uh, don't get to share because we run out of time, you can go back and put your strategy in this, uh, sh in this giant shared spreadsheet. And you'll see if you're there, you'll note that um, we're using the same spreadsheet for all four sessions. So this being session three, there's lots of resources already here. So yes, we will see what this looks like by the end of the day. I am going to try, even during lunch, I tried to clean it up a little bit because um, while we're doing it in real time, it can get a little yucky and messy, but no big deal. We'll go back and fix it. And you know, probably by tomorrow afternoon, you'll have a resource that you can share with everybody with links. One last thing about the videos. When you come on and you're recording your three minutes, remember this is recorded. So what I'm planning to do at the end of the at the end of this is I will have um, these four uh, long hour long videos of of the shareathon, right? But I'll ha I'll be able to go into We Video, chop those up, and take the two or three minute segments and group them together. So let's say there's a bunch of strategies after the the the. the you know, all on literacy, I can put those together and then we can have a different literacy experience where you're watching everyone else's shared resources around literacy. Or, you know, let's say there's some math hacks, you know, well, then we'll put all those math hacks together. So right now it's going to be a jumbled mess of just hodgepodge, whatever comes up and what whatever resource feels good to you, like you really want to share. But the final result will be me cutting those and editing those together to make a completely different experience um, based on on uh, topics all right and at the end don't forget to sign up so uh you know make sure you get attendance credit for for attending tucker how'd i do i think you did great thank you my friend all i right. hope everyone here does better <laughs> than me <laughs> all right i'm gonna stop presenting um and uh tucker just like when we're rolling for initiative, my friend, what um, we're going to do, read the, the top three names, like who's coming up. So this person, if you're number two on the list, you know that you can get yourself uh, you know, ready. You're number three on the list. You kind of have this cue ready to go. So Tucker, who is number one? Uh, I don't see anyone that's volunteered yet, but. Oh, no. everyone, put your names in the chat if you've got something to share. This is your moment. Shine. Come on screen. Come on down. All right. I see Roberta, Tucker. I do too. All right. So go ahead. Keep putting your names in there. Tucker, will. Be, his job is to copy and paste them and keep it keep in order. So just keep going. Roberta, you're first. Uh, you're muted, I think, Roberta. Hi, my name is Roberta Smith, and I'm a, a self-contained art TA three through five at Goshen Post Elementary School. Um, I just for all, well, it can be for everybody do less talking and use more visuals because children seem to respond better to them because when you talk, sometimes they just hear blah, 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 blah. So I'm done. <laughs> Roberta, hold on a second. Hold on. Yes. First of all, you know I love that strategy of using visuals, right? <laughs> yes. All right. So I'm going to give you one. I got to show a quick little tip. Okay. Okay. Mind if I show one uh, mm -hmm. on how to make, how to make some little visuals. All right. That would be did, great. Did anyone go to the, um, the uh, organization strategy presentations earlier today where they showed you color coding in the, okay, well, okay. Well then I'm going to show you this. So let me quick do present now. This is not about me. This will be you next, but since Roberta brought it up, I'm going to show it. So I'm jumping over to, my Google Drive, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to Google Drive, right? And here's all of my stuff in Google Drive. Hold on, let me do, um, come here. I wanna go to Drive, not Priority, right? And you can see all, and this is what yours looks like, right? Well, what one thing you can do is if I wanted to change this, I can go and change the color of my folders, right? Okay, so colors make it more visual. But a little known, a little hack a lot of people don't know is something called Emojipedia, Emojipedia.org. And what was that? What was that for? That was, um, let's see, that was app requests. So I'm going to change it to computer. Computer, right? And this is going to give me a little emoji of a desktop computer, right? When I click on that, I can hit copy. Yeah. Okay. So now when I go back over here, 
and I click on here, right click, rename, I can, come on, get over here. There we go. Control V it. And there's a little icon now, or I could put the icon in front, right? And now I can put little icons in my Google Drive to more quickly recognize and make my students that might have reading difficulties and they're having trouble organizing their Google Drive, they can recognize those pictures. So what do we think? Good hack? Yes. <laughs> All right. I know you're talking about other stuff, Roberta, but uh, Control-V <laughs> Control V is copy. Uh, there's copy-paste. You know, Control-C is copy. Control-V is paste. All right. Thanks, Roberta. Um, who's next, Tucker? Uh, up next is Pushash El Kashif, and yes. then uh, Nina Valley and J uh, Jadine Ray. I am Pushash. I teach physical science at Sterling Middle School, eighth grade. So I came up with uh, an interactive notebook, and that interactive notebook contains every activity that the students have linked to the interactive notebook, a digital dictionary, and the lab sheet that they need to know, that they need to complete for me. So I'm willing to put that URL for the interactive notebook in the chat box if you want me to do that and you can show it to everybody. Pushash, uh, yes, definitely do that. But would you mind sharing your screen and just showing it real quick if you okay. have it? Okay, I can do that. So this is the interactive notebook, the page one. This is the introduction for page one is the engagement activity. And they respond to this question and they type it here. Page two, this link will take them to brain pop to explore the topic that we're gonna talk about. And this is the reading and they will use read and write. And again, this is the link that they will take them it will take them to the definition of the word. So if they are, they don't know what's matter or energy, they can click on the link and go back. And I teach ELL, so this is the Excel word. And again, it's linked to the uh, word that we are using, the seven steps in Sterling Middle School. So this will lead them to the definition of the word give them a time to, to practice how to use the word in their own sentence, and we move on. And this is, a, 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 they grab the text box and they put it over here. So as we go, oh, sorry. As we go in the book, they continue to move on and as we go to the lab sheet, they have, this is more activities to apply their knowledge, drag the box and dream pop again. And then we have the lab sheet. So all what they need to do is, I have the directions for them to do here, what to do. And they click on the link, they make a copy for themselves and they respond to the lab questions and they put their URL over here. So at the end, when they go over the whole book and they complete all the pages in the notebook, they turn the notebook to me and I have all their work in one place. So that's a kind of like organization skills for them because sometimes they forget where they put their work. And But this way, if you use the interactive notebook, I can see what they did and how they did it. And I can see all the work that they have. Pushash, awesome, awesome. Anyone, quick questions there before we move on? Because that was a lot, but it was also very cool. I have a quick question, Pushash. Do you do yes. a different book for each unit? Yes, I do a different book for each unit. For example, electricity, it's a huge no, uh, a topic for eighth grader. So each lesson is a different notebook. And they all will go in one folder in Schoology under electricity that's awesome can you put the link in the chat yes i can thank you 
and also in the spreadsheet. I've created, a, you are currently, Pushash, you are uh, Google Sheet uh, line number 33. So if you could drop the link in there, that would be awesome. This is what okay. I'll be shared with everybody. Okay, I will All do right. Tucker, who is, thank you so much. Tucker, who is next? Up next is Nina Valley, and then Bobby Matthews, uh, and Rose Weitzner. All right, so we know who's coming up in the queue. Nina? Hi, um, I'm sharing now. So mine is really simple. It might work really well with Pushash's I idea. Um, can you see my screen? We can, Here yes, we, we can. All right. So mine's called Colorzilla, and it's really simple. So here I made a quick slide, and I just put an American flag here, but you can use this in any document. And you download it. It's a, um, it's a Chrome, uh, Chrome um, edition, so you just go into Colorzilla for Chrome. And all you do is when you have it, you click on it, and then you hover over whatever color it is that you're trying to match exactly. Like here's our blue, here's our red. And once you have, like you can get tones of it too. Once you have the color you want, you click. And then let's say you're adding then a um, some writing and you want it to be the exact same color. So you come in here and you add your words. Okay, America, I'm not sure if I spelled it right. But now you want it to be the exact same red. What you would do is you go into your color, you click here, you go to custom, it's already highlighted, so you're just going to hit Control D. Now you have the um, the hex code for the color you just picked up. You hit OK, and it's the exact same red. So for those of us who really don't like it when the shades are off a little bit, you can do that. And that's all I got. Nina, that is awesome. That is totally awesome. What a nice little cool little extension. That is great. All right, Pushash, I see a bunch of questions about your your um, stuff. Um, can I add my name to the spreadsheet? Yeah. Uh, okay. So, Pushash, can we? Can you come back for a second? Do you mind if we do something real quick? Yes. All right. We're going to show another little hack for everybody. Um, would you mind sharing your screen again? Okay. I'm sorry, me. You were cutting out. I didn't hear anything. Were you talking sorry, to no. Push? Yeah, Pushash. Okay, got it. Thanks, Nina. So, okay. So Pushash, first thing first, will you make go to file, make a copy so we can mess with a copy of this and make sure we don't mess up your awesome work here. Okay. Cool. Okay. Now, if you would go to share once it pops up. And if you would go to, come on. You know how to make this go faster? Did you tap your foot? Oh, look, it worked. Um, so you click down on change link to Loudoun County Public Schools, not copy link the next to it. Change link, yep, perfect. Uh, hit got it. Now, the, there's a little drop down arrow next to the words Loudoun County Public Schools. N not that, uh, yes, right there. And if you click on that and choose anyone with the link, Okay, now hit um, uh, and make them editor. Let's just to be to be yes. All right, now hit copy link and hit done. Okay, now will you go to the spreadsheet? Perfect. All right, and let's just scroll down. Let's pick some sort of. Or you know what, Pushash will be even easier because there's a lot of people in the spreadsheet. So can you just open up a Google Doc, like a brand new Google Doc? I'm going to show everybody this hack. What we're going to do is force copy, make a force copy of Pushash's presentation, which means when you click on it, you will get, you'll be asked, can you make a copy? Nina, you're nodding like you've done this before. Uh-huh, you know this hack? All right, will you um, paste it in here, Pushash? Okay, so that's the URL, right? And you yep. change, yep, Nina, you delete the word sharing, delete the, all the way up to the word edit.
And go ahead and delete edit two. And now type in the word copy. So slash copy. Yeah. Now co copy the whole thing. Paste that into the chat. Well, actually, let's test it first before you paste in the chat. Will you open up a new tab? Okay. And paste it in there. Let's make sure it works. Knock on wood. Come on. Let's make sure it works. Nina, it's going to work, right? Oh, what I mean, sorry, Pushash, is if you go up to the new the new tab again. Here it is. Yes, and paste it right in there. Delete all that stuff and paste it in there. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yes, you got it. And then hit enter. Watch what happens on the screen. It says, would you like to make a copy of this? And this way your students or anyone else, you probably did this in Google Classroom where it forced me to copy, but this is actually what's happening behind the screens. So you can make your own. Yeah. Cool, good stuff. So I share that link with you? Yeah, if you can put it in the chat, that would be great. And we'll be able to grab it later and put it in the spreadsheet of you if for some reason you can't edit the spreadsheet right now. Okay, I will do it. Right. Sorry for that little sidetrack, but I think that's a really good useful useful tip, everyone. What do you think? Did you not know, Nina? That was a good one. Those, yes, excellent, good stuff. All right, yes, good, good, good. All right, Tucker, who was next after Nina? Uh, after Nina, it's uh, Bobby Matthews, and then Rose Weitzner, and Tess Dickerson. All right, great. All right, sorry, my computer was being a little crazy. So I am going to share with you guys um, a site called Canva. I'm not sure if you guys have used it before. You maybe have. It's just, can everybody see my screen? Yep. Okay, it's called canva.com. Um, it's free. You do um, sign up. I signed up using my um, school Google account. Um, it, it, there is a premium you can pay for, but you don't have to. Um, I was playing around yesterday trying to make um, a header and some buttons for my Schoology site because I saw some really neat ones and I wanted to try to make some. So um, this is going to help you to make your header for it. So you can use it for pretty much anything, but it, it's really easy. Um, you just go to custom design and I'm going to do this. Um, we need to change this to inches because it gets crazy if you don't. Eight by two is what um, you're gonna wanna use for a header for your um, Schoology. And I can show you what I mean by a header. I have so many things open here, sorry. <laughs> um, I'll show you, for those of you that maybe don't know, um, when I go to my class, so, I have my um, Bitmoji Classroom that's all interactive there, but I also made this header here using the Canva site. So that's what we're looking at here. Um, there are tons and tons of backgrounds. You can use anything you really want. Um, but what's really cool about it is that you can edit anything on here. So you can delete these words, you can change these words, um, you can do pretty much anything you want to. Um, so maybe I want it to say welcome. Um, and then you can go over here to text and you can change what your text looks like. Um, you can change the color. Um, it will match the colors that's in the document here. Um, so if I don't want the pens on there, I can go over there and I can delete those. Um, you can do all kinds of cool stuff. You can take out the background. Um, you can do your Bitmoji if, if you love the, the or emoji, or you can go to your Google Drive. You can go to um, Gippy if you want to do that. So maybe I want to have um, pencil. And the clue for this is to make sure you put stickers behind it. 
because otherwise you're going to get some weird stuff on there. So you can put an animated sticker and you can rotate it so that maybe you have that mixed in and do it on both sides. Um, and you can do all kinds of stuff, change the background, um, pretty much anything and everything you can think of. You can add music, you can add different elements to it, like maybe you wanna add um, shapes or frames. So then once you've done that, it's very easy to save it. You just click this little drop down. You're going to click download, but make sure that you ch save it to um, either a JPEG or if you have moving parts, you need to save it here on this bottom one, GIF or GIF or however you say that. Um, so you're gonna save it and click download. It will automatically save it to your computer. But what's great is, yeah, I don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna save it to my pictures and it's automatically in there. Um, what's great is it also saves it here on um, your site here on Canva for free. So if you don't wanna have to keep it on your computer, you don't have to. You just click all your designs and it's already in there. Um, so then to put it into your Schoology, you're gonna to go to your updates. And because I've saved it, I would go here to resource and I, um, I'll show you how, but I'm not actually gonna put it in there. Um, and then if you put it onto your Google Drive, you would click apps, but because I had it on my computer, then I would go and attach it that way. Uh, maybe if I can remember how to get to it. Mm -hmm. See, I practiced this even, and now I can put it on there. <laughs> I think I have to upload it in there first, but so, what I have here, I'll just show you with mine. So what I've done then, um, this is an announcement that I already did with mine. So what you would do is you would just copy or insert your picture as an announcement, as a resource, or you can copy and paste it from a Google Doc, which is what I did with my buttons also that are on here. And then they're hyperlinked. So I'm able to click them and it will take me to whatever I have it hyperlinked to. Nice. Nice, Bobby. That is awesome. Cool. Hey, Tucker. Yep. Who else likes Canva? I do. And mom. There, and mom. Mom's a big Canva fan, Bobby. So I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. All right. Uh, who's next? Uh, next up is Rose Weitzner and then Tess Dickerson and Liney Marks. Liney? All right. So yes, Rose. Hey guys, how you doing? Um, Camp is awesome. I, I don't know if you had mentioned this or not, but um, there are, as a teacher, you can sign up for a Canva for Education account and you can get all of the pro features for free and you can also extend them to your students. Um, so just do that. Go to Canva for Education and sign up for it that way and you get all the bells and whistles and all the images without the watermarks and it's really cool. Anyways, I just wanted to share that. Um, so what I wanted to show y'all was um, Tall Tweets. I don't know if y'all have seen this one or not. Um, it is, yes, Canva for Education. Um, and um, it's where you can kind of like make GIFs out of slideshows if you want to. So, oh, oh, I guess I should present first, sorry. Hold on, sorry. Um, one moment, please, take up the difficulty. Um, What's it called, Rose? Tall Tweets? Tall Tweets, all one word, T-A-L-L tweets.com. Sweet. And so I'm going to go to a slideshow. Can y'all see that? Um, a slideshow that I presented. And what I did is I made some emojis, um, like my little bitmojis, and I had little dancing ones because I wanted to have one with me dancing across the screen. So I added into each slide a different, you know, little dance that I was doing. And then what you do, is you go to talltweets.com and you scroll down a little bit and you look for select presentation. So if you do that, it's gonna bring up your Google Drive and it'll bring up whatever your most recent you know, slide presentations have been and hopefully it's the one, the first one. So it's like right here and hit select. And what it's gonna do, it's gonna think for a moment and then it's gonna pop it into its little 
a little window here that you'll see. So you can kind of like see it. So what you want to do, first thing you need to do is to, hit, to create the GIF. And there are here, I'm sorry, there were like, you can kind of like change the duration. Like some people can use this, like if maybe you wanted to say welcome as a, like a welcome banner across your, you know, your, your, um, the, the Schoology, um, block you know and you could have like each letter come up in order and you could have it be a particular duration um however you want to do it you change the pixels the width and all that kind of stuff so once you create it what you want to do is to save it and once you save then you download it so i'm gonna download it here Boop. and i am now going to go back into my slideshow and I'm going to insert it. And then you should be able to see it work its magic. And there you go. <laughs> that is awesome, Rose. And obviously you do whatever background you know you want for it. But it's just really cool. It's really fun. And that, that also could be something, you know, that kids may want to use in class. I mean, they're, I can see them using that you know, as part of an assignment or a fun way to express their creativity. Um, but anyways, I just wanted to show that because I heard about that this summer and I just thought it was the coolest thing. So. Hey, Nina, you said it, this is literally so cool. Do you, do you, how else do you think you can use it besides like dancing, right? And so one quick idea that could, that I think could really help some students is flash reading. So reading sentences by seeing the, um, a word each time and so they and then the gif would repeat you know and you could extend it and make it slower or longer so you so it's it's on the screen a little bit longer that's one particular idea right marie yeah jackie i see you got those sifars in the room so um yeah loving that okay but any other ideas if you have other ideas and you have um you can edit the spreadsheet go over to rose's co column which used our her row Rose's row is 38 and put your other ideas in there, how you think you could use it. All right, Tucker, who we got next? Tucker, are you muted, my friend? All right, did Rose just go? Yep, that was Rose. All right, next up is Tess Dickerson and then Liney Marks and then I, I don't know, uh, Chris Stark, I don't know if he just said something in the chat. He said yes. I don't know. I, there wasn't really anything particular around for him to say yes to, so I was assuming that he was going to present. Tucker, you're the facilitator. You tell Chris he has to come on. Then. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, Chris, well, well, you got to think of something now. All right, who's first? I'll go. Tess? All right. Stickers yeah, test? Tess. Thank you. Um. Okay, so I don't have anything quite so fancy. I almost want to take a pass. Is that allowed? Um, no. <laughs> so I just was going to remind everybody of a really great tool that's tried and true, um, Class Dojo. And it's not as um, applicable probably in our distance learning, but just as like a wonderful PBIS tool, I use it every year. I've been doing kinder for the last several years. And it's really great because I can target those specific behaviors that I want to um, encourage and then also target behaviors that we're really working on. It can be totally personalized to each student. They can have their own set of what they're what they're working on. Um, also, I love the application in SPED um, because it, it kind of becomes um, a tracking device. So you can kind of see if a student's losing a dojo on um, maybe self-control is a goal that they're working on and they're continuing to blurt out and it usually happens after lunch, you can kind of track that data and you can say, okay, well, gosh, maybe something's happening at lunch. Why are they coming back from lunch? And they're so, you know, out of control or whatever. So it becomes a great tracking um, tool. And then also the parents get updated in real time. So that really helps us as teachers not have to sit down at the end of the day and send out 10 emails. Um, and at the beginning of the year, I always establish the routine of if your child either earns or loses a dojo, you have to talk to them first. You cannot come to me first. You need to ask them because if they don't know why they earned it or lost it, then 
that's a problem. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, those are all the reasons I like Class Dojo. Nothing new and fancy, but um, but it's tried and true. Tess, I'll tell you, I bet you there are people in this room that have not heard of or used Class Dojo. Am I right? Yep. So you discussing it, it it's... Uh, uh, I'm glad you took the time to ex to explain how you use it too, because the, sometimes I feel like um, that's a tool that gets misused. Do you know what I mean? So the way you explained it is so so well. All right, uh, Tucker, who is next? Uh, up next is Liney Marks, and then Chris Stark. All right, Liney, when you come on, you got to tell everybody how we know each other. They're not going to believe oh, yeah. it. Oh yeah. So uh, Chris and um, his wife. Melissa used to be my babysitter. <laughs> <laughs> and now she's a teacher in the county. <laughs> yeah, they taught at my uh, mom, my the school that my mom taught at and the one I attended. And yeah, so I've been in LCPS too long is the moral of that story. Um, so what I'm going to share is something that um, a lot of people probably already know about, but that I love. Um, and it is called Video Blocks. So um, this is actually a really expensive program that LCPS gives us access to. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share. Let's see. There we go. OK, so um, there we go. Now it's doing it. Yay. OK, um, I'm presenting to everyone. Indeed, I am. Uh, when you go into LCPS Go, under library resources, there's like 60 plus things in there, and it's really easy to not even look through all of them <laughs> because there's so many. But um, we have audio blocks in there, and if you scroll all the way down, there's also video blocks. What this is, is a website that has a ton of stock footage that you can use, um, and even for the more advanced people, there are things that um, you can do in Adobe After Effects, different video effects and transitions and things. Um, so what's really cool about it is if you have a kid that's making a book trailer and it is about a book that takes place in the desert, then that student could look up the word desert and then they'll get a whole bunch of results. And a lot of them are just really cool, like drone footage of different deserts, et cetera. What you can then do, you can kind of preview it by hovering your mouse and you can download the clip. The clips are super HD. So sometimes I recommend going the smaller <laughs> size. You can download those files and then put them into um, WeVideo or any other video editing software and really create some cool stuff from your house since kids can't get together to film stuff you know for book reports or whatever um it's a really cool way to bring them outside of their house or let's say they're doing um biomes or whatever and it, it is not copyright i mean it is copyrighted material but lcps pays like i don't even know how much money probably a lot um every year to be able to have this stuff and you don't have to worry about intellectual property or anything like that um they literally have everything I, I was teaching fahrenheit 451 i looked up robot dog and they had it um prove it prove it liney <laughs> oh i will let's see robot dog and i think it was technically like a horse but yeah robot dog look at how many options i have <laughs> there's like a dystopian one i think i ended up using that one for fahrenheit um and then audio blocks is music that is not copyrighted or it is copyrighted but we're allowed to use it as long as it's a non-commercial thing um and you can actually get to that by just going to video blocks and you can click audio and you can type in a mood that you want and it'll give you a bunch of selections so maybe you want something that's inspirational you put that in and it'll actually give you like a ton of choices for what you can use. I'm just reading the questions. Uh, no, there is nothing inappropriate on there because it is all managed by LCPS. So they're not going to be able to find anything that um, is inappropriate. So um, yeah, let me see if there's any other questions about it because I use it all the time.
Um, nope. nope. No it used questions. to be you could only use it in the school building, but they expanded the license so you can use it at home and so can the kids. Sweet. Liney, that is so great. Make some podcasts, make some videos, invite students to do it for an authentic reasons too. I uh, love it. Love it. All right. Um, Tucker, who's next? Uh, the last person on the queue. We need more people. Is Chris Stark. <laughs> All right, everyone. You heard Tucker. We need you to volunteer. Oh, Allison's putting on the list. All right, Chris, thanks yeah, for don't, volunteering. Don't be the last one now. I need someone to trump me on this one. But uh, great ideas from everybody. I wasn't prepared to present, but uh, I was just kind of grabbing ideas from folks. But I guess um, one thing I'm looking to use this year is Nearpod. I'm sure people have heard of it. It's a Google add-on. Uh, I can share my screen if you would like. But I, yes, I would hope do it. A lot of people would know about it by now. Oh, no. our, our, well, I'm at Briar Woods and um, I teach cybersecurity and I'll be teaching sports marketing. So I'm looking for ways that we can um, engage our kids, obviously. So this is the kind of the, the homepage for nearpod.com. You, you set, set up your account through Google. Um, I have imported a couple. I'm on the free account right now. So you have limited storage, which is uh, a drawback, and it's about a $125, $150 uh, purchase if you can do it on your own. Our, our school is considering uh, buying it for its teachers. But I don't know if I can walk everybody through this. I'll try it. Um, I'll do the live participation, and some of the stuff might be grayed out. But basically, you create a, a presentation, and um, your, co your kids will have a, a join code. And then you control the pace of the screen. Students sign in. I'm just going to kind of walk you through the best I can. And then I can control what you see on your screen. And this first question is just to get to know you. I am a, are you a sophomore, a senior, a junior, a freshman? You have 15 seconds. You can adjust the timer on uh, you know, some of the questions. Again, I'm not sure if this is really going to be a, a great example because it seemed to be grading out, but it's loading. But I've just got some get to know you questions. So little poll questions. This is a little more clear here. And you can share the results with everybody so people can tell who likes to go to the mountains for vacation, that kind of thing. So this was just like a day one kind of, you know, get to know you. Would you rather have as much money or as many friends? Uh, choose your superpower. And then uh, a couple other features in here. I don't know if I've put them in or not in this particular presentation. So forgive me for zipping through this. But you can add these pages. And there's probably 12 plus um Activity. So if you go to add activity, you can add web content, you can add open ended questions, you can import something if you want them to draw on. We, we do a, a lesson on physical security. So I'll put a, a floor plan of, the, of a house and they can actually draw on the screen to say, hey, I would build a moat or walls or have you know, gun turrets or killer dogs or whatever they want to come up with. Um, and there's true false questions. There are others in here. I know for sake of time, I don't want to. Um, everyone to tears here but it's really worth looking through uh you might be able to finagle it in the free account uh, you're limited by storage space again so that's kind of an issue there but uh just got a lot of interactive features that i think are easy to use and hopefully fun for the kids sweet see chris see how easy it was he wasn't prepared and look at what an awesome job he did that was fantastic all right tucker who who popped up next all right, uh, three more people: Allison O'Leary, uh, Stacy Both, and then Nina Valley again. Cause thank you for volunteering to do again. Am I unmuted? Yeah, we can hear you. Yep. Okay, cool. Um, so I'm showing you something that our um, guidance counselor or school counselor created for our summer camp that we had a couple weeks ago that I thought was really cool for the sixth graders to kind of warm up to us which is to create an icebreaker where they each get their own slide to type into. So you would create um, some sort of icebreaker, make it available that everybody can edit, they each pick their own slide. And so the icebreaker I'm just showing you right now is the one where you pick three images from where you're from, and then they have to guess where that is. So it's a good way to bond very easily and quickly. Wait, Allison, let's everyone guess in the chat. Okay. <laughs> where is she from? I see maple syrup, I see Ben and Jerry's, and a cow. Vermont! Yeah! <laughs> That's very cool. So, uh, Allison, do you think you could share a link to that? Sure. 
you know, doing that copy hack that we looked at earlier. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, we'll help you through it if you need it. Okay, I'm on it. Uh, all right, Tucker, who's next? Uh, next is Stacy Bowes, and then up next is Nina Valley. All right, I'm going to present my screen. This was shared with me this morning from another one of these sessions, and I just thought it was absolutely fabulous. So you're at home and your kiddos don't have any math man manipulatives. This link will give you um, access to all these different math manipulatives. So you can use this for geo boards. Um, these are here. Polygons are available for you. Money. All in one spot. I love it. I love it. It's thinking. So, um, so you guys get the gist, but um, I can post that in the, um, on the working document that Chris started. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I love having it all in one space, you know, so people don't have to hunt for it. And it's kind of a visual yeah. display like that. All right. Who's next, Tucker? We're back to uh, Nina. Yep. Nina, thanks for volunteering twice. You're welcome. Yeah. Um, okay, so this is another really, really quick one. I also really like this, and I'll tell you uh, why. It's a reusable link. As long as you use this Google link once in 90 days, um, it will not go away. So I'm going to show you how I'm using it, then I'll just tell you what it is. So here's, can you, I'm with you, right? Okay, so here's my seminar class. And let it open. So I made my little Bitmoji. And if you see here, I have office hours, and then I have classroom. So those are both links for uh, Google Meet. And each one has a different Google Meet link. So I clicked on the office hours and it's taking you to this um, to this Google Meet and kids will just join. You don't have to keep telling them, here's the link, here's the code, or you know, like the little um, the little uh, class code to add or whatever. They just come, they open their Schoology, they're on that landing page, and I have the links embedded for these. So this and so this is my class link. The other link. Um, in another one of my courses, we're having combined office hours, so we're all using the same link. So I'm going to tell you, it's so easy to do the link. I'm going to go to our chat, and I'm going to type it in for you. All you have to do is say, uh, do HTTPS, colon, forward, forward, uh, G dot CO, forward, meet, forward. And here, you just write whatever you want. So I wrote, like, uh, Dr. Valley, AP Seminar, whatever you want to do, you write in your own name. This part doesn't matter. You copy whatever that link is, and you make, you put that, you link that into your Bitmoji or into your PowerPoint or wherever you're going to put the link, and then you have a permanent place for a separate class that the students can log into. And that's it. I'm done. I will stop sharing. I did not know about that little hack, Nina. Typing in that g.co slash meet. I did not know about that. I have a question. Yes, please. Prushash. Uh, do you use the same link for the same class every time, or do you reset the link every time you use the link? Okay. Nina? I just had a hard time unmuting un myself. So, okay. I use it's the same link. I will not, for the rest of the year, change my Google Meet link for as long as I need Google Me. As long as I've used it once every 90 days, it's a it's a live link. It'll work for me. No one else, no other class can take it. So I did it, made it once, and I put it into my Schoology, and now I'll, and I'm gonna teach the kids, that's where you go. Here's our, the, you know you know what time class is, just go there and click on this thing, the one that says classroom for classroom, office hours for office hours, and you'll go right to where you need to be. Because I remember last spring, we were like, you know, I was like remind texting and putting it in Google Classroom and like, here's the link, here's the link. I'm like, I cannot do that again this year. So this works really well. The reason I'm asking this because last year when we used the same link, students share the link with other people who are out, not as a student. And we have so many intruders during the meeting. So that's why I'm asking. Intruders, do you from, 
from LCPS or outside of LCPS? Outside. Well, they outside you, they can't just automatically join. You have to grant access to somebody that's outside. So just don't do it. Just don't grant access. Yeah. Um, and I think it's really, that's more of a, it's going to be a choice for you, whichever works best for you. For me, I think I'm just going to drill into my kids. If they screw up like that, then they're going to be in a lot of trouble. I'm not, I, I'm not going to create more work for myself by creating a new link. They just need to behave appro appropriately, but everybody should do, you know, like whatever works best for them. Okay. Thank you. So Nina, you, uh, my daughter's name is Nina. Absolutely love that name. Um, so you, after the HTTPS Google slash meet, then you type like your own personal word or something and then it will. Yeah, but it's meet forward. Don't forget the next uh, forward slash. Forward so slash. Meet is the forward slash. And like I wrote for my office hours, I wrote Valley office hours. Gotcha. Um, for my, for I did one for AP seminar, I wrote AP seminar, Valley AP seminar. I did one for AP research, Valley AP research, Valley AP world. Like I just put my name, just that, that's like my one little additional level of security that nobody else is going to use the exact same code. And, um, and I put whatever my class was, but they don't, it doesn't matter. It's for you. The kids will never see that because all they do is oh, click on where yeah. the link. You don't yeah. have to put that code to them. Wherever you put that link, I mean, it could be the link that they actually see and you just have it written out as a link. Perhaps you don't want to embed it or something. And so they see what you actually wrote and that's fine too. However you want to use it, but they, they don't have to see it if you don't want them to see it. So it could be any name you want. So once you have that link and it's live, you can copy it and embed it into a button or an image or whatever. Yeah. So you know what I did? Like in my Bitmoji, I pulled up the Bitmoji. I, I made uh, where I was going to link it, like where I wrote in classroom. I wanted to put it there. So I made a text box and then I went up and clicked link. And then I literally just typed this in. I didn't make it first. I just typed it in, um, you know, the whole, the whole um, address, like I told you typed in the name I was going to use and hit enter. And that those were the links you saw those two, those two links. So they are that way. You don't have to make them separate and put them in. You can just type them in as you go. Awesome. Can I show something along those same lines, jumping in here, cutting the line? Tucker, am I cool to do that? Yeah. All right. So Nina and everybody, I'd like to show you a little hack and Nina, maybe you know this one too. So you, you share my seat, you can all see my screen now, right? Mm -hmm. Do you see all these little links up here? These are little, you, what do you get? What do you think that link is? S-G-Y when I click on it, right? It's gonna take me to my Schoology, right? M-I, we have an inventory spreadsheet that we use. And these are common, like, uh, I don't know, read like this takes me to my Google Drive, there's my Outlook, right? So, so the way you create these is in your URL bar right here, if you click on this uh, like a little lock, and again, it could be anything. Like here's a little Google do uh, doc I have on, uh, on how to make videos, right? I can just click and drag that down and that adds it to my toolbar. And then I can right click on that and edit it. And I could say like Nina's class, you know what I mean? Or language arts, you know? Um, and then they'd all, it would always be there. Do you know what I'm saying? It's always there. So that's another little hack I think one for me it makes things a lot faster to, to get to what I need to rather than um, having to navigate somewhere because it's always there at the top of my screen cool is that helpful so same thing would work here with the Google that's you'll need you'll see these this is my CIFAT meeting room where I meet with the other specialized instructional facilitators for assistive technology and this is my own room that is just my own Google meet right just like Nina's <laughs> Julie, I love it. You go tell people that. <laughs> All right. Uh, we've got five minutes left. Tucker, let's do one more and then I'll do final thoughts. I, there's, I don't think I see, I've seen anyone volunteer. So if you want to do one. Okay. Well, any questions before we wrap up? Uh, wait. Uh, oh, Bobby. I can fast Bobby. Bobby. All right. Okay, so I have a, these are really fast. One is, if I can get it to go here. I have, is it showing? I have a really great um, person that I follow on YouTube called All Teched Up with Brit. Um, I was trying to, oh, I have this lovely little video open here. I was trying to teach myself more 
um, strategies with Schoology, and she has tons and tons and tons of videos on things that you can do with Google and Schoology and all kinds of things. Um, but super great person to follow. She's a teacher. Um, she answers emails. So if you have any questions, if you don't understand what she's talking about, um, she does a really great job. Um, she teaches all different kinds of, of things with Schoology and with Google both. Um, the other thing, I'm not sure how many of you guys use Twitter or anything like that. Um, I use something called Hootsuite. So if you are someone who tweets out or uses a classroom um, Instagram or has Pinterest, you can um, use Hootsuite. It basically combines it all into one. So I can write one tweet or one post and it will put it on my Instagram, it will put it on my Twitter, and then it will put it on if I had like my Google site stream or whatever on here that I wanted. So those are my fast two th things or tips for you. Bobby, I've been a longtime fan of TweetDeck, which is like just like Hootsuite and puts things in columns, you know? I, I love it. So yeah, excellent, excellent. All right, everybody, so thank you so much for sharing today. Um, I have just a couple quick final things to show you, and then we will be done. Um, so I'm going to share my screen again. Uh, so don't forget to, to go and sign up to make sure you get your credit for participating today. Go away. Uh, I don't mean you to go away. I mean that bottom screen to go away. Oh, i got to turn on my captions. We go right, but make sure you go back to the sketch. You click on this attendance sheet for my learning plan and get your credit for being here today. Um, but here at Win the Last Minute, let me explain that we have more. There's more places you can go, tips and tricks. If you enjoyed this, and it seems like you did, because I saw a bunch of people posting, "Hey, we should do this once a month." Uh, I hear you. Uh, let me see what I can do. Um, but the uh, there's a workplace group called Tips and Tricks. Now, if you're not familiar with Workplace, Workplace is owned by Facebook and Loudon bought it. So it's Facebook for work, um, but it's encapsulated so it's not out on the public. It's just people in Loudon County Public Schools. And there's a group that is over there called Tips and Tricks where people post stuff just like the stuff you did today. Uh, second is that we just launched this week something called the Inclusive De Design website. Um, and so this inclusive design website is all about inclusive design, how you design things with, uh, with by thinking about people with disabilities first. Um, you'll see there's different uh, technologies here in different categories, and we'll be releasing some more here in the next couple of days. But the way it was, since we have two SIFARs in the room, let me at least two that I know of, let me show you that real quick. So here it's like reading supports using technology, and then the function that, of technology that could help with reading. So here's text-to-speech and then short little videos that show you how you can get these different features. Here's on iOS devices and how you can simplify text and little videos on how to do that. So go play around in that website because lots of good supports there as well. And my final thought for you is simply this. All of these strategies that are linked over in the Google Sheet and that we heard today um, uh, are meant to help you provide more options to students. Uh, the name of the game here isn't make everybody um, do the exact same thing, but instead invite students to use these different tools to, um, to as their choice, right? When they're showing what they know, um, you have all of these different technology options and you can see how many we shared in the last three hours already and there's so many different ones there, that provides kids with so many different options for them to, to design stuff and make stuff and show what they know. So we, we can get to a place where we are asking kids to do what works for them, really personalize it. I feel like the power of educational technology is in the options it can provide. So that brings us to two o'clock, everybody. Thank you so much uh, for participating. Um, and we will uh, enjoy the rest of the day and stay in touch. Thank Thanks for sharing. Bye, everybody. Thank you. You guys are awesome. Thank you guys for coming. You guys did a great job. They did a great job. They did.
I'm stopping the recording.